जय हनुमान अति बलवान राम नाम रसिया प्रभु मन बसिया <coughs> जय हनुमान मीन्स विक्टरी टू हनुमान अति बलवान मीन्स इज extraordinarily strong in fact however strong you think he is he's way stronger way far stronger than that jay hanuman ati balavan ram naam rasiyare he gets his juice from the name of ram ram naam prabhu manabasiyare oh lord hanuman please come and sit in my mind Welcome to Living with Reality, a podcast featuring archive teachings and modern conversations with Dr. Robert Svoboda, brought to you by the Be Here Now Network. Living with Reality explores Ayurveda and other wisdom traditions of India, which Dr. Svoboda has been studying for nearly 50 years. For more information, please visit beherenownetwork.com/drsvoboda. That's D R S V O B O D A. Hello and welcome to Living with Reality. I'm Paula Crossfield, your host and Dr. Saboda's business manager. So I've helped him to create all the courses that you see when you go to drsaboda.teachable.com and I help him overall with his media presence so that you get all of his awesome juicy content online uh wherever you hang out. So this episode is all about Hanuman. It is about the stories of Hanuman and you may have heard these in the past because this is a rebroadcast of something we did live uh about a year and a half ago. But it's the perfect time of year to just sink in with a cup of tea and listen to these stories again i find that i can't get enough myself and i think that you'll really enjoy the retelling of these stories if you'd like to learn more with dr swoboda he has like i said many many courses if you go to drswoboda.teachable.com/courses that's d r s v o b o d a dot teachable dot com slash courses you can even use the search function to type in hanuman and you'll find a course called prana pranayama and hanuman and inside this course he talks a lot about uh hanuman and his origin story goes a little bit deeper and teaches you a little bit about the chalisa there's a whole uh talk about it and its importance and the the meaning behind it So we hope you enjoy this episode and have a wonderful end of 2022. Namaste. And Jay Hanuman. Um welcome to this storytelling session dedicated to Hanuman. Uh dedicated to Hanuman because today is Hanuman Jayanti. the hanuman's birthday and so what better day to um uh salute hanuman and um we're going to um <clears throat> sing the hanuman ji uh a little birthday song um <clears throat> instead of happy birthday it will be sort of kind of the equivalent of happy birthday because it's a song that is dedicated to him and that song is called jay hanuman and it goes this way jay hanuman ati balavan ram naam rasiya re prabhu man basiya re <clears throat> Jay Hanuman means victory to Hanuman. Ati Balawan means he's 
extraordinarily strong. In fact, however strong you think he is, he's way stronger, way far stronger than that. Jaya Hanuman Ati Balavan, Ram Nam Rasiyare. He gets his juice from the name of Rama, Rama Nama. Prabhu Manabasiyare, O Lord Hanuman, please come and sit in my mind. So that's what we're going to request Hanuman to do. And is as is traditional when telling the story of the Ramayana, we specially invite Hanuman to come and sit because that is um, the thing that he most likes to do. He most likes to hear the Ramayana. And um, <clears throat> he likes to hear the Ramayana, not because he wants to hear about his own story, but because he is focused always and eternally on Rama. And anything that has to do with Rama, anything that will help him remember Rama is something he likes to do. So, um, of course, Hanuman is a uh, traditionally regarded as being a monkey. And in fact, a type of Langura monkey. A langura, uh, there are two major types of monkeys in India. One is the bandar or the lal bandar. Uh, and they are, uh, unfortunately, they tend to, when they are around humans too much, they take bad qualities from the humans and become criminals. And they are very terif they terrify people all the time. The langura, on the other hand, uh, is vegetarian, is generally ignores humans, though they will occasionally steal food from them. Um, in fact, one stole a banana from my sister many years ago when she visited Elephanta Island in Bombay Arbor. So um, we know that langurs are fond of fruit. So what we have, what I've done here is I put a little place where there is a banana plant. It's a symbolic banana plant, no doubt. But that's going to be the place where Hanuman is going to be invited and to sit. So we're inviting him right now to sit there. We've sung happy birthday to him. And we're going to request him to sit there while we tell the story of um, his life and, and what he did for Rama. And so um, his life, of course, um, begins with his birth. Uh, my, my mentor, Vimalananda, always liked to call Hanuman Anjaneya. Anjaneya is a name that is derived from the name of his mother, Anjani. And um, because aside from Rama, the only other person that Hanuman ever paid attention to, I mean, he was very, he, he was, uh, fond of Lakshman and Sita, and he would always um, do whatever Rama told him to do, and he would serve Lakshman and Sita in whatever way he was told to do. But of course, he was very fond of his mother, just like any child is fond of their mother, especially when they have such a wonderful mother as Anjani. So the story goes that when he was born, he was born already very strong. And he was a, a monkey, a very powerful monkey, no doubt. Um, but it is the case that many animals, when they are um, born, uh, they're not like human babies. They can do things very soon after they're born, like a, 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 a foal, a small horse, um, within just a few hours of being born, can get up and run around. Now, Hanuman was something beyond all of that. So when he was born, he was not only uh, ready to move around and eat and so on as soon as he was born. He was ready to um, ready to uh, to to do uh, heroic things right from from that moment. And of course, he had just been born, so he didn't know everything about how the world was arranged. So he was born. And he was looking around and he saw, my goodness, everything is there in the world. And what an interesting thing that is. And he saw the sun, the rising sun. 
and the color of the sun is red. And if you see uh, images of Hanuman in India, they will usually be red or slightly a little more orange than this color because um, they've been coated with a particular type of uh, red substance. Um, because his he his image uh, he's already regarded as being red. Red means powerful and strong and heroic, and um, uh, red is the color of Tuesday. And today is at least. Um, uh, where I am, and in fact, still in India, because it, the sun has not risen yet. Today is still Tuesday, and the color of Mars, who, who rules Tuesday, the color of Mars is red. So that's why I'm wearing red. Um, and so he saw the sun, and the sun was red. It was coming up, and it looked like a very large, attractive red fruit. And because he had just been born, he was hungry. And being an immensely powerful monkey, he thought to himself, he was, remember, he had just been born. So he was not, his rational mind was not completely uh, thinking clearly yet. So he thought to himself, that looks a lot like a fruit. I believe I will eat it because I'm very hungry, having just been born and all. So he jumped into the air in order to grab hold of the fruit and start to eat it. Now, of course, if he had reached to the sun and consumed it, that would have been the end of the solar system. There would have been no Rama, there would have been no Ravana, there would have been, everything would have been over. The Ramayana would never have been told. So Indra, the king of the gods, hit him with a thunderbolt on his jaw. And knocked him down to earth. And it caused his jaw never to be quite right anymore. And the word for jaw in Sanskrit is called Hanu. And some people say that's why he's called Hanuman. Though Vimalananda used to say, really, you should not call him Hanuman. You should call him Anuman. Because Anu means atom. So he's the atomic power, he is the energy, the vital energy of the entire universe, which we call in Sanskrit pran. Or he said you can call him Hanuman because Hana means to, to kill and because he is an incarnation of Shiva who is the destroyer of the universe. So the natural nature of Shiva is to try to destroy things. So here, Shiva is born as Hanuman. He sees the sun. He thinks, I may as well destroy it. So he is prevented from destroying it. And then uh, a Rishi comes along. A Rishi is a very uh, a wise person who has great powers. And that Rishi says, um, Hanuman, you're a great character, but um, you're still very young. And we don't want you to destroy the universe while you are growing up and figuring out what to do. Therefore, I'm going to cause you to forget your powers and you are not going to remember them until someone reminds you of them. And after that, Hanuman forgot that he had all these wonderful, tremendous powers, though even with 99% of his power gone, he was still extremely powerful. In fact, he was powerful enough then when he, it was time for him to go to school, he did not go to the schoolhouse like all the other young monkeys in his town. He decided that because when he was born, he saw the sun. So that, that imprinted on him. The sun was something that was because it was very big. It was the brightest thing in the sky. Nothing to compare with it. He thought, if I'm going to learn something, I'm going to learn it from the sun. So, therefore, he went and he met the sun and he said, and the sun was thinking, oh, my goodness. Uh, but then he, the sun had been advised that Hanuman has forgotten all of that terrible, hor uh, intense power for right now. So don't worry about it. Everything is fine. You're in no danger. So the sun was thinking, OK, that's good. And so Hanuman said, I would like to learn from you, please. 
And the son said, well, I mean, I'm a really busy guy. And and frankly, everybody in the universe relies on me to be completely reliable so that they can tell time because I, they know that I'll always rise in the east at a particular time and I'll always sit in the west. So I can't stop. What is that? How am I going to handle that situation? So Hanuman said, do not worry, O son. What I will do is I will walk backward in front of your chariot as you move through the sky every day. And you can teach me as you move through the sky every day. And so indeed it happened. And every day Hanuman would learn a little bit more from the sun until he had learned everything the sun had to teach him. And that was an extremely satisfying thing for both the son who wanted to have a very good student and Hanuman who wanted to learn what the son had to teach him. So in this way, Hanuman grew and was educated and uh, was enjoying um, uh, doing whatever it was that he was doing at that time. Um, And then one day what happened was He was wandering around in the forest and he met two unusually interesting looking human beings. Interesting in the sense that they looked very powerful, very large, but also very wise, but also very gentle and compassionate all at the same time. And he was quite impressed by this. He was so impressed that he came a little closer. And when he saw Rama and when Rama saw him, suddenly he realized without having to think about it, without having to wonder, but without any sort of question or doubt in his mind, he knew that Rama was the man that he had to serve. And later on, he discovered that the reason why he had been born was specifically to serve Rama. And Rama was the seventh incarnation of Vishnu, the preserver of the universe. And Rama had come down, as Vishnu always does, whenever things are extremely troubled in the universe. As Krishna, incarnation number eight, says in the Bhagavad Gita, yada yada hi dharmasya vanir bhavati bharata abhyutthana addharmasya tadatmanam srijamyaham paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya chudushkritam dharma samsthapanarthaya Sambhavami, yuge, yuge. So whenever there's a problem, in order to protect the good people, destroy the bad people, I will appear on earth. I will be reborn, take incarnation from age to age, from yuga to yuga. And so Hanuman recognized that here was the only worthy person in the entire cosmos to be served. And he had been born to serve this very person. So immediately they bonded together because, of course, Rama also recognized that here was Shiva who had been specially born in order to serve him in this job that had to be done because Vishnu can't do without Shiva and Shiva can't do without Vishnu. They work together. They're a team. So once this happened, Hanuman immediately said, Prabhu, Lord, how may I serve you? And Rama and Lakshmana explained the whole story that Rama had been born uh, uh, to become king of the uh, city and the country of Ayodhya. And Lakshmana was one of his brothers. And Just before he was going to become the king, uh, he was forced to go with his wife, Sita, and with his brother, Lakshmana, into the forest. And they were supposed to wander in the forest for 14 years. And they had been wandering around. 
And it so happened that a great demon named Ravana, Ravana means the guy who howls, who makes a gigantic loud noise all the time, the howler. So Ravana came and stole Sita away. And Rama and Lakshmana were looking for Sita because Sita was the incarnation of Lakshmi, who's the wife of Vishnu. And Vishnu and Lakshmi are always together. But here on earth, they had been separated and they had defined one another again. So Hanuman said immediately, of course, I will do anything to assist you. Let me introduce you to King Sugriva, who is the king of all the Wanaras, all the monkeys. And um, we'll solve this problem as quick as we can. So they met Sugriva, various things happened, and many of the Wanaras were sent out in different directions. Hanuman and Another animal who was serving Rama named Jambavant, the king of the bears, they went to the south. And as they went to the south, they were wandering around and they met a giant vulture. A vulture is a very large bird down in this part of the world. I'm in Texas right now. We call it a buzzard. So a giant vulture. And this giant vulture, whose name was Sampati, uh, was able to give them some very important information because Sampati was the brother of another giant vulture, whose name was Jatayu. And Jatayu had seen what happened when Ravana was flying away in the air with Sita in his chariot. And Jatayu attacked Ravana and tried to save Sita. But Jatayu was an elderly vulture. He was not as strong as Ravana. And Ravana chopped his wings off and threw him to the ground and left him to die. So before he died, he met, Sampati was able to meet him. And Jatayu told him everything and told him that Ravana was taking Sita to Lanka. Lanka, which is an island not terribly far from the tip of South India. And Hanuman and Jambawant were extremely happy about this. And uh, so were all the other Wanaras who were moving along. And they decided we must immediately go to Lanka and um, we must find Sita. And this was, of course, what had to be done. but. How would they get there? Because even though they could see Lanka, there was still the ocean in between them and they had no boat. So one of the Wanada said, well, I, I can jump this far, but that's not as far as I can get to Lanka. And the other one said, I can jump that far. And at this point, Jambavant, who had been told the story of Hanuman, at this point, Jambavant said, you know, Hanuman, I'm going to remind you right now that, in fact, you are about 100 times more powerful than you really think you are. And in fact, you are going to very easily be able to fly in the air and land on Lanka without any difficulty whatsoever. And as soon as Jambavant said that, the veil of ignorance was lifted. And suddenly Hanuman realized that, yes, I can do this. I can serve Rama in this way. So he immediately gathered all of his energy, pressed his legs against a big mountain and caused the mountain to get all squashed because he was so powerful. And then he flew into the air and he headed off for Lanka. And on his way there, there was a giant uh, 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 Nagini, a giant uh, serpent creature uh, named Surasa, who had been sent there to test Hanuman. Uh, why he needed to be tested at this moment is not clear, but apparently somebody or another thought he needed to be tested. Um, you know, it's kind of like in school. Sometimes you have a sudden 
uh, a, a pop quiz when you're not expecting it. So Hanuman was not expecting this, but here it came and Surasa suddenly showed up in a giant form in front of him and said, by the way, Hanuman, hello, how are you? And uh, it just so happens that in your destiny, you have to enter into my mouth. And Hanuman, who had now been reminded not only of how powerful he was, but how clever he was, and he could look into his destiny, and he said, OMG, oh dear, in fact, she is right. Uh, what am I going to do? So he thought, hmm, okay. He came up with a plan. So he made his body bigger because he had remembered that he had the power to make his body as big or as small as it needed to be for the job he needed to do. So he made his body bigger and she made her mouth bigger and he made his body bigger and she made her mouth bigger and he made his body even bigger and she made her mouth even bigger. And just when her mouth was pretty darn big, he went from being gigantic size to being the size of a small bee and flew right through into her mouth and right out of her mouth again without her being able to close her mouth and trap him inside. And so he said to her as he flew off, I have performed my destiny. I have flown through your mouth. I've been in the mouth. I have left again. And now I'm continuing my job for Rama. And Surasa said, what a great thing you've done. I give you my blessing. You're going to be very successful. Good work. Keep going. So that went on very well. And then he finished, he continued flying through the air. And then suddenly he realized he was not flying anymore. And he kept trying to go forward, but he couldn't move forward anymore. And he looked down. And when he looked down, what he saw was his shadow had been grabbed a hold of by another type of demoness whose name was Simhika, the mother of the extremely well-known and very troublesome demon Rahu. And Simhika said, aha, I have trapped you with your shadow and now I'm going to have you for brunch. And Hanuman said, you know, I don't think so. I've already had to fly into one mouth this today. And so I'm going to fly into your mouth also. But uh, you are clearly not the sort of uh, same kind of person that Surasa was. So Hanuman flew directly into her mouth, came out directly through her stomach, flew into the mouth in a small form, came out of the stomach in a giant form, blew her to smithereens. That was the end of Simika. And he continued on and landed on Lanka. And he quickly looked around and he saw, oh, there's a giant city over there. And is the city of, must be the city of Lanka. So he went to the door of the city of Lanka and there was a demoness sitting there, a very powerful demoness. And her name was Lankini. And she was the guardian demoness of the city of Lanka. And she said, who exactly do you think you are? And Hanuman said, I am Hanuman. I am the servant of Rama. I have come here to find Sita. Get out of my way. I'm in a hurry. And Lunkini said, I don't know who you think you are, you overgrown hairy monkey. But I am Lunkini, and I am the guardian deity of this place. And you had better hit the road or I'm going to beat you up. And Hanuman said, don't be ridiculous. And so all he did was sort of uh, give her a glancing blow with... Um, and she immediately fell over in his, an extremely bruised state. And she said, OMG, you are clearly a lot more powerful than I am. And thank you very much because I had been cursed that I had to be the guardian of the city of Lanka until a giant monkey would come and humble me, which you have now done. Thank you. You've freed me of the curse. What a great guy you are. And may you also be uh, successful in your um, endeavor. So Hanuman was feeling even better because now he'd been blessed by two uh, 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 individual, power, very powerful goddess, demoness-like women on his way to um, find Sita. Now he went down to the size of an ant 
and he started moving around. Of course, he didn't move at the same speed of an ant because that would have taken him several days to move around in Lanka. But he moved around very quickly, but in very tiny size, so nobody would notice him. He looked around, he looked around. He couldn't figure out what was because there were big palaces and there were other big buildings and he had no clue as to where Sita would be. And of course, he didn't exactly know what she looked like. And um, so he was kind of puzzled, but he was very fortunate because he heard very faintly the sounds of someone worshiping Vishnu. And of course, Vishnu, Rama is an incarnation of Vishnu. So he thought, ha, someone is worshiping Vishnu. That person will have some information that may be useful to me. So he immediately went there. And where he got to was the house of Vibhishana. And Vibhishana was Rama, one of Ravana's brothers. But he happened to be a devotee of Vishnu. And this didn't make Ravana very happy because Ravana was ruling the universe and didn't have a very good opinion of Vishnu. But Vibhishana said, look, you know, this is a temporary thing. Vishnu is the preserver. He's the guy I'm worshiping. So Ravana, because after all, brother, you don't want to, you know, slaughter your brother unnecessarily. He said, OK, please stay away from me if you're going to worship Vishnu. So Vibhishana minded his own business and was worshiping Vishnu. Hanuman showed up and Vibhishana said, uh, who are you? And Hanuman said, I am Anjaneya. I have come here and I'm looking for Sita. I'm the servant of Rama and uh, she has to be taken back to Rama. And Vibhishana said, you are the servant of Rama. Therefore, I bow down to you because I am a great devotee of Vishnu and Rama is the incarnation of Vishnu. I will help you in whatever way I can. And the way I can help you right now is I can tell you where Sita happens to be. And she happens to be in a place called the Ashoka Vatika. So you go down this street and you take a left here and a right here and a left here and a right there and you go a little further and then you go to the left again and the right again and there you are. And of course, she's going to be surrounded by a bunch of demonesses and they will probably be taunting her and teasing her and making her life miserable, but eventually they will go to sleep and then you can talk to her. So Hanuman said, thank you very much, J. Ram, and um, went off and immediately located the Ashoka Vatika. And that word Ashoka is very interesting because um, Ashoka is a type of tree in India. The leaves look like mango leaves. Uh, it doesn't really give any fruit but it creates the perfect sort of shade. Under an Ashoka tree, you you know, under many trees, you'll see some shade and some, some light, but under an Ashoka, you're just in the shade. So the Ashoka Watika is a place where there are a bunch of Ashoka trees, so it was nice and shady and cool because Lanka can be hot sometimes. But Ashoka also means lack of grief. Shoka means grief, and Ashoka means no grief. So, of course, it was meant to be a place where everybody would go and enjoy themselves, but Sita was full of grief because she was separated from Rama. And because Sita and Rama are, are Vishnu and Lakshmi, and they're always together for ages and ages and yugas and yugas, to be separated even temporarily, even on the earth, is a very, very traumatic thing for them. So Sita was there. And we know that they would have been connected to one another uh, uh, psychically and astrally. But, um, but, but despite being connected that way, um, they were not physically together at this time that they had physical bodies. And this, of course, was a, a most miserable thing. So Sita was full of grief, full of misery. And ironically, she was in this place called the garden of misery freeness, of no grief whatsoever. So Hanuman located her there. There she was, and she was very unhappy. And the demonesses were taunting her, but she was ignoring them. 
because she was thinking about Rama. She was not wasting time thinking about the idiot demonesses. And finally, they all fell asleep. And then Sita was thinking to herself, and she started thinking to herself aloud, you know, I, it's been so many months, I haven't met Rama. I thought he would be able to find me soon, but he hasn't found me. I wonder if he will ever find me. I just don't know if I can continue anymore. I, I may have to simply, my feeling is so strong, I don't know if my body can take it anymore. I may not be able to survive. And of course, when Hanuman heard this, he was thinking, OMG, OMG, we can't have this happen. So in a very small voice, he said to her, Sita, Sita. And of course she heard this and she thought, okay, there's some demoness who is not asleep and she's on the, he's in one of these trees over here and is, and she's trying to torment me some more. So um, she said, fie on you, uh, oh, you, you rapscallion demoness, leave me alone. Uh, and Hanuman said, uh, oh, Sita, do not fear. It is I, Hanuman. You do not know me yet, but soon you will. And I am the dedicated servant of Lord Rama. And um, as that dedicated servant, I and Janea have come to reassure you that uh, as soon as I get back to India, I'm going to go and meet Rama, let him know where you are, let him know that you're well. And in fact, if you would like, I will just take you there right now, because as it turns out, I have the power to jump into the air, fly wherever I want to. And uh, frankly, uh, we can fly over and meet Rama. And Sita said, you know, this is you demonesses, you're uh, very, your tortures are very clever. Um, but obviously, you don't expect me to believe that. You don't expect me to believe that you have come from, a, a, I, nobody has come from abroad yet to locate me. So how can I possibly have the faith and confidence that you are telling me the truth when everybody has been lying to me all this time? And um, Anjanea said, uh, it just so happens that um, I have brought something with me. I have brought with me a token. And by this token, you will know what exactly the situation is. And so from that tree, he dropped Rama's signet ring onto the ground in front of Sita or possibly into her hand. Uh, but probably it was a better idea to drop it on the ground so she wouldn't be scared and toss it into the bush or something. So she kind of suspicious. Naturally, she walked over, picked up the signet ring, and saw it was Rama, Rama's ring, and she knew it very well. And all of a sudden, she went from being completely despondent, from having no faith, full of grief, to having complete faith, and she said, yes, Rama has, he is still alive, here is his ring, we will be together again. So all of a sudden she was completely confident again, all the doubt was gone. So Anjanea said, you know, whenever you're ready to go, um, just, um, uh, you know, uh, decide how you would like it. I can grab hold of you, you can grab hold of me, and we'll fly in the air. Sita said, no. Um, it will be most appropriate for Rama to come and rescue me himself because he was born for the purpose of killing Ravana. So we've got this far. Uh, we need to let, uh, you know, please go back and tell him, let him come over here, let him save me and kill Ravana um, in the bargain. And do not worry. I will make sure that uh, everything remains uh, calm with me over here. Now I have no shoka anymore. I have no grief. I'm absolutely a shoka now, grief free. And don't worry about that, but please immediately go back to Ramana, uh, to Rama and, uh, let him know 
that I'm fine and I'm waiting for him and um, tell him not to delay. So Anjanea said, uh, excellent, I will do that. But um, I think what I also need to do is meet Ravana myself and let him know, give him a final warning, let him know that Rama is on the way. And uh, he can let you go right now. And if he lets you go freely, then um, then that would be appropriate. Then he will have submitted to Rama. Then Rama can, can come here and control him. And that will be the end of the problem. Sita said, well, you're free to try that out. I mean, go ahead. But um, he's not going to listen because, uh, I mean, at this point, I know him a lot better than you do, and he's not going to agree. And man said, that's all right. At least I can report to Rama that I've met Ravana, and I know what kind of guy he is. So Sita said, okay, what are you going to do? And Hanuman said, I am going to um, create a little uh, distraction here, and um, then I'm going to allow myself to be captured. So he created a distraction by tossing some demonesses around and uprooting a few trees. And uh, Ravana's son, Indrajit Meghnad, came and said, what is this? Some sort of monkey uh, creating problems in the middle of the night in the Ashoka Vatika? This will never do. So Indrajit Meghnad took the Nagapasha, the special kind of snake uh, uh, rope uh, and the, the noose of serpents and tied Hanuman up. So Hanuman was not at all impressed by it, but he thought, okay, I'll pretend to be tied up for a while. Why not? And so they carried him to Ravana, taunting him all along the way. How Hanuman was finding this tedious, but he thought, I want to meet Ravana. They got to the palace. Ravana was awakened. Meghanad said, here is this, um, this uh, 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 evil doing monkey who has been creating a bunch of problems. And he was in the, in the Ashoka Vatika and Sita was there also. And, uh, and that's the situation. So Ravana said, let him immediately be put to death. And Ravana's brother Vibhishana said, you can't do that before you find out why he's here. Ravana said, oh, well, right. And um, so Ravana said, why are you here? And Anjanea said, I am Anjanea. I have come here as the messenger, the ambassador of Rama. And Rama says, uh, please surrender Sita right now. I will take her back to him. Uh, if you would like to survive. And uh, otherwise, Rama is going to come here and slaughter you. Ravana got a big laugh out of that. Ho, 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 slaughter me. I ruled the entire universe. Who is this Rama character? Forget it. Uh, I don't know who he thinks he is, but if he can actually get over here, <laughs> let him come and show me um, how what kind of uh, strength he's got. Now put him to death. Vibhishana said, wait. You can't do that because he is an ambassador, he is a messenger, and you're not allowed to kill the messenger. Ravana said, drat, I want to kill the messenger. All right. Uh, but we must afflict him in some way because that is our job. We are rakshasas. We must afflict. And uh, so mm, he thought about it. And then he said to himself rhetorically, what is that part of the body that the monkey is most impressed by and that they're proudest of? Wait, it is the tail. Therefore, oh, my minions, collect a bunch of rags, soak them in oil, wrap them around his tail, set them alight, and let his tail be incinerated to show him just how powerful I am. And so, so it happened. They wrapped a bunch of rags around, applied a bunch of oil, ignited it. And once the tail was burning brightly, Hanuman broke the Nagapasha very easily whoop, and expanded himself to a giant size, said, you're going to regret this, Ravana. 
you had your chance. I gave you a chance. And this is going to be the end for you. But I'm going to go back and tell Rava, uh, tell Rama. And you are, you've been a very naughty character. And this is a bad, a bad ending is going to happen to you. But first, I'm going to let you, sh- I'm going to let you see what's in store for you. So he jumped out of the palace, breaking it into pieces as he went directly through the roof. And then he wandered through Lanka, flying around, using his burning tail to set fire to the entire place. And the entire place burned down, except the Ashoka Watika, in which Sita was there. She was protected. He made sure not to burn that area down, but he burned everything else down. And despite the fact that his tail was on fire, he felt nothing but a cool breeze sensation from his tail because... Sita was reciting mantras in the Ashoka Vatika to keep the tail cool so the fire would not burn it. Once Hanuman had finished burning down Lanka and uh, chuckling to himself, he jumped into the air. He landed back in India. He met Jambavant and the other Wanadas. He said, Success is ours. I found Sita. I burned down Lanka. Everything is great. They went back. They met Rama. They said, um, <clears throat> Sita is over there. All we have to do is go over there. Um, and then we will um, be, uh, be able to conquer the place. And you will be able to kill Ravana, get Sita back. Everything will be great. And Rama said, that's absolutely great. All we need now is an army. So with the help of Sugriva and Jambawant, they collected together an army of vanadas, of monkeys, and of bears. So they now they had an army of monkeys and bears. They marched down to the seashore at what is now Rameshwaram in South India. And they got to the seashore, and there was the ocean. And now remember, Ravana, uh, Rama is the incarnation of Vishnu. So... Uh, He requests the ocean for assistance, but the ocean is feeling not like assisting him because the ocean had been greatly tormented during a previous avatar of Vishnu, the Kurma avatar, when the ocean was churned and the ocean was very much afflicted by this churning. And so Lakshmana, who was very hot headed, said, I'm going to shoot a fire arrow into the ocean and burn up the entire ocean and we will walk to Lanka. And Rama said, please calm down, Brother Lakshmana. We don't need to do that. And Rama said, look, oh, ocean, I know you're pissed off. I know that the affliction did occur, but we don't want the world to be afflicted by Ravana either, now do we? So let's think of a way in which we can both um, have satisfaction here. So the ocean agreed that it would be okay if a bridge was built from India to Lanka. So that process, the bridge building started immediately. That process was called the Setu Banda. Setu means bridge and Banda means building. And because they didn't have, this was a long, long time ago, they didn't have fancy engineering, they didn't have cement trucks, they didn't have all kinds of uh, steel and concrete and stuff like that, they had rocks. So what Rama did is he would inscribe his name on the rock, and with the power of that name, um, the rocks would actually float. The ocean said, okay. I will allow the rocks to float as long as they have the name of Rama on them. So everybody started writing the name of Rama and the bridge was being built. And Rama thought, well, you know, I'm, I think I will try this out myself. So he wrote his own name on the rock and he threw it into the water and lo and verily it sank to the bottom of the ocean. And Rama was feeling very, unclear about the whole situation because everybody else's rock was floating and his rock was falling down. And so he looked over at Anjanea and Anjanea said, oh, great Rama, you, after all, are the king of the universe. If you throw a rock into the ocean, 
it will have to do, it will have to behave according to its own natural rockness, which is to sink. Everyone else is doing things in your name. You, on the other hand, you are the one in whose name everything is being done. When you do something, it has to cooperate according to the way that things always happen in the world. But this is a different situation because your name is supreme. And that's why we say in Jay Hanuma, Rama Nama Rasiyade. He gets all, uh, Hanuman and Janaya gets all of his juice from the name of Rama. Anyway, the bridge is built. The army goes over there. There's a bunch of fighting, 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 lots of fighting. At one point, Meganad again strikes with the Nagapasha and he strikes down Lakshmana, Rama's brother. And Lakshmana is as dear to Rama as life itself. And now Rama is thinking, oh, my God, if Lakshmana is going to die, uh, I'm not sure if I can go on or not. And so Lakshmana is in a coma and his situation doesn't look good. So Anjanea uh, asks Vibhishana. Vibhishana has meanwhile defected from Rama and come to Rama because Vibhishana said, uh, you know, this business of not letting go of Sita and trying to destroy Anjanea, this is not correct. This is against Dharma. This is against the principles of being a good king and you're going to regret it, Ravana, goodbye. So Vibhishana has come with Rama back to Lanka and Vibhishana says there is a famous physician. His name is Sushena. And he may be able to save, he's the only guy who can save Lakshmana. So, and Janaya jumps into Lanka, finds Sushena, grabs him, brings him back and says, now what do we do? And Sushena looks at Lakshman, takes his pulse, examines the omens and says, there's only one hope. That is the Sanjeevani plant, the herb named Sanjeevani. Sanjeevani means brings back to life. And it is growing on a particular mountain in the Himalaya, you must get that mountain and bring it back before dawn or Lakshman will pass on. And so, and Janaya says, do not worry, I'll be back in a trice. And so he jumps into the air, heads directly for the Himalaya, which is many thousands of kilometers to the north. He's flying along. Uh, there is a demon named Kala Nemi who tries to uh, distract him and slow him down. He's slaughtered. And there is um, uh, 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 some distance that he has to cover. But finally, he gets to the Himalaya. He finds this mountain and he looks for the herb. But of course, there are thousands of herbs on the mountain. He thinks, I don't have time for this. I, don't, I haven't seen the herb. I don't know how to find it. So he uproots the entire mountain, and now he is holding the mountain in the palm of one hand, and he is flying through the air with another one, and he is headed back to Lanka. When suddenly he is struck by an arrow in his thigh, and he falls down to the ground. And he's a little surprised by this. And he looks around, and he sees someone coming with him, uh, towards him, carrying a bow looking a lot like Rama and saying, who do you think you are? You must be sort of some sort of demon who else can fly in the air. I'm not, you're carrying a giant mountain. This doesn't look good. I am Bharata. I am the regent of Rama until Rama comes back. I am acting as the king, but I am not the king. I'm only acting in Rama's stead. And Anjanea says, well, as it turns out, uh, Rama, Sita has been uh, uh, kidnapped by Ravana, the demon, and Rama and Lakshmana have gone off to with the army of uh, bears and uh, monkeys, and Lakshmana's been damaged, and I have to get this back to him uh, before dawn, because otherwise that will be the end of Lakshmana, and that may be the end of Rama, and then everything will be... Uh, all messed up. And Bharat says, OMG, 
I made a great error. Uh, here, uh, uh, get on my arrow and I will send you immediately to Rama. And uh, Anjanea says, thank you very much. But I mean, you know, the only reason why your arrow could bring me down is because you shot that arrow with the name of Rama. So the name of Rama had to be, I had to respect the name of Rama and allow that arrow to shoot me down. But now that you're giving me permission, I can go on my own power. And besides, I know where I'm going and you don't. So it'll be better if I go. And so they um, salute one another. And Jenea, who is now a bit lame, um, and there is even uh, in India a, an image of um, Anjanea, I believe in Girnar, called Langade Lal, the, uh, the, the lame Hanuman. So Hanuman is flying along, gets to where Rama and Lakshman are. Sushena finds the herb, brings Lakshman back to life. Lakshman is happy. Rama is happy. Anjanea is happy. Vibhishana is happy. Everybody is happy except Ravana, of course, who was hoping that this would save his... Um, chestnuts from the fire, but uh, it was not to be. So now there's another big battle and Rama is perforating Ravana with arrows, but none of them are able to um, uh, destroy him until Vibhishana lets, finds out where that from a complicated uh, uh, scenario involving Ravana's wife, Mandodari, finds out exactly the place that has to be targeted. Rama targets that place. The arrow goes there uh, unswervingly. Ravana falls over, whack. And that is the end of Ravana. And uh, he is then incinerated and Vibhishana becomes the king of Lanka. Rama and Sita are reunited and they all go in a giant airplane called the Pushpagaviman back to Ayodhya and once they get back to Ayodhya, Rama becomes the king and uh, Lakshman serves him and Sita uh, is his wife. And, um, and then uh, Hanuman continues to serve Rama until it's time for Rama to pass on. And um, when it's time for Rama to pass on, Rama says, oh, Anjanea, uh, I am mortal. I shall die. My name will live on. Rama Nama will live on. But I, I have been born as a mortal and I'm going to die as a mortal. But you, you are not mortal. You are immortal. And you, I re I'm going to request you to remain here on earth and assist people from now uh, until the end of time. Yavat Chandra Divakaro until as long as the sun and the moon exist. And uh, that's a pretty long time. Um, so ever since then, Hanumana and Janaya has been there uh, and he has been met. Many people, many uh, excellent people have met him, including Bhima from the Mahabharata, who was one of the five Pandava brothers. Um, and Bhima was the son of go the god of wind. Hanuman was the son of the god of wind. So they were they were um, half brothers. And um, there's a, an interesting um, story in the Mahabharata that uh, Bhima is in the Himalaya one day, and his wife asks him to get some flowers. So he's wandering around looking for some flowers. And Anjanea has, of course, has been paying attention to what's going on in the world in the world and knows that what's um, <clears throat> what's happening and knows that Vishnu has been born again as Krishna, the eighth avatar of Krishna, and wants to assist Krishna, wants to serve Krishna as he served Rama. And so uh, he decides that he will let Bhima tell this to Krishna, but first he is going to teach Bhima a useful lesson because Bhima is very powerful, uh, but he has a very high opinion of his power, uh, an opinion that is too high. So Anjanea takes on the form of a very aged, infirm, decrepit monkey 
and lies across the path that Bhima is going to is walking along. And Bhima comes to him and um, says, um, oh, aged monkey, you are lying across my path. I need to go and find some flowers. Would you mind moving away? And um, uh, Anjanea says, well, I'm a very aged monkey and um, I, I, I simply can't move. I'm, I'm exhausted. But if you can just move my tail out of the way, you'll be able to get around and then get through. And Bhima is thinking, oh, my God, now I have to grab hold of this aged monkey's tail. Who knows what kind of fleas and other things are on it? And oh, my God. Oh, well, such is my destiny. So he grabs hold of the tail and thinks he's going to be able to move it very easily. And of course, he can move it not even one nanometer, much less a millimeter or a micron. And so he is there trying to move it and applies all of his energy and cannot move it even in the slightest. And then, then he starts to realize that this is not an ordinary aged decrepit monkey. This is something out of the ordinary. And he starts to think, wait a minute, there was an ancient monkey back in the time of Rama long, 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 long ago could it possibly be Anjanea? Yes, said Anjanea. Yes, you have come up. Yes, very good. You have figured out who I am. And I just wanted to let you know, we're both, we're bros. You know, you're the son of the God of wind. I'm the son of the God of wind. You're very strong, but there's, don't remember, however strong you are, there's always going to be somebody stronger than you are. So don't get the big head. Remain calm. And please let Krishna know that at the time of the Mahabharata war, I will come and I will be on the, uh, on the, on his chariot. I will be in the form of a flag on his chariot. And um, there uh, I will protect the entire chariot and Arjuna, who is going to be the warrior. Krishna will be the charioteer. And so it happened. And thus, the Mahabharata war was won by Krishna and Arjuna and their group. And um, ever since then, Hanuman has, has appeared to, to other individuals and has been incarnated again as Samartha Ramdas, for example. He appeared to Tulsi Das. He's appeared to many devotees. And uh, he is always ready to serve Rama. And if you invoke him in the name of Rama, he will always be willing to assist you to move your awareness further and further in the direction of Rama. So just as we began, we're going to again sing the happy birthday song, Jaya Hanuman, and we're going to thank Anjanea for sitting here in the banana grove um, while we um, re recited his um, stories and we're going to ask him to please return to where you normally go thank you for being here thank you for listening and please bless us with the always having uh the memory of rama uh in our hearts there was the final thing we will mention about hanuman is uh one day somebody said something asking who hanuman really uh, was, uh, you know, what was what was Hanuman really about? And, and Janaya tore open his chest and inside the chest, instead of a heart, there was the image of Rama right there. So Hanum Hanuman and Janaya is completely devoted to Rama in the same way that the prana, the life force in the body is completely devoted to the supreme reality. And therefore, Jaya Hanuman Ati Balavana Ramanam Rasiare Prabhu Manabasiare Jaya Hanumana Ati Balavana Ramanam Rasiare Prabhu Manabasiare J.J. Raghavira Samartha.
from reality. Always focus on that. And that will guide you through this very bizarre time that we are living in right now. How old is Hanuman? Uh, well, that's a good question. How old is Rama? Um, uh, I would say nobody knows, though Vimalananda was of the opinion that Rama lived somewhere between 100,000 and a million years ago. So I would say Hanuman is pretty, pretty darn old. Um, what is the best way to practice our daily devotion towards Hanumanji? Um, a good way is to sing. You can sing Jay Hanuman. You can sing Sri Ram Jay Ram Jay Jay Ram. That's very good. Um, you can uh, read the Ramayana. I, the, there are many Ramayanas in India. You can read, if you can't read the whole Ramayana, read the Sundarakhand. If you can't read that, even take one verse out of it. And if you can't do even one verse, just use the name of Ram, as they say in, uh, in Sanskrit. Sri Rama Rama Rame Ti Rame Rame Mano Rame Sastranama Tatulyam Rama Nama Varanane. If you can't read the entire thousand names of Vishnu, just recite the name of Rama. Will the daily chanting of the Hanuman Chalisa truly heal health problems and diseases? Yes, it actually can do that. How long will it take? That we don't know. If it's a simple problem, it may take a small amount of time. If it's a complicated problem, it could take a long, long time. But absolutely, it is going to give you a good result because what you will do is you will be getting the prana to move properly. And when the prana is moving properly, all will be well. Uh, relation between Hanuman and the Navagraha. Saturn is pacified through Hanuman prayers. What about the other planets? If Saturn is pacified, then everything is great. So again, Hanuman represents prana. If your prana is calm and focused, whatever happens, you're going to be able to deal with it and you'll continue focusing on the supreme reality and have faith in it um, no matter what happens. Um, and uh, Hanuman, of course, when Saturn came to him, the reason why I forgot, I should have mentioned, the reason why his tail had had to catch on fire was when, because Saturn comes for everybody, Saturn make, is the force that causes you to experience what you would have preferred not to experience. So Saturn came to Hanuman and said, now I'm going to throw my drishti on you. Uh, you better, uh, you know, bow down. And uh, Hanuman said, you know, I'm busy serving Rama. So he took his tail and kept shunning uh, Saturn down so Saturn could not do anything. And Saturn could not do anything to Hanuman, except that he could arrange for his tail to be set on fire because it was the tail that touched Saturn. But Sita arranged it so that, in fact, um, nothing happened to the tail. <clears throat> Therefore, uh, worship Hanuman and all will be taken care of. How are Hanuman and Shiva related? Hanuman is regarded as being the incarnation of Shiva. Vimalananda used to call him the Ekadasha Rudra, the 11th of the Rudras. Um, and um, uh, <clears throat> e so he's an incarnation of Shiva. Uh, a mantra for Anjaneya, which we can offer in Homa. Um, I, uh, I mean, I generally, uh, personally, use the, uh, I mean, I use a mantra of my own that I don't ever speak aloud, but I use the Chalisa, and if not the Chalisa, Sri Ram, J Ram, J J Ram. I think you can use, uh, there are uh, abundant uh, mantras that one can use, but those are the two I use. Uh, why was Hanuman a monkey? Uh, that's a good question, and, and it's very likely, in fact, that he was not completely a langur. I mean, it makes sense that he would, if he was a monkey, that he'd be a langur instead of a lal bandar. We were nalag. Um, <clears throat> the word that they use is va nara. Va, va means either or, and nara means human. <clears throat> so a va nara would really suggest that somebody who was almost human, but not quite human, which is why Vimalananda said this could have been even a million years ago, because it's very likely that this happened at a time that there was a previous race of hominids 
like Homo erectus, for example, and Rama showed up and said, I'm going to bless you that you actually turn into humans. So that's how Vimal Ananda looked at it, that they were proto-humans, not really monkeys, but pro simians, you know, they were primates, but proto-humans, and they just needed Rama's blessing to become you and me, actual humans, even though we're not really humans to the same degree that Rama and Lakshman and so on were humans. Did the Ramayana happen on Hanuman's birthday? Uh, well, I mean, the Ramayana took a long time to uh, happen. And uh, there is a tradition that says that um, Hanuman was born about the time of Rama, but Rama was born six days earlier. So Ram Navami is when Rama was born. Hanuman was born six days later. Why would Sita and Rama allow themselves to be separated? Well, that's a really good question. And a lot of people have tried to figure that out. I think one reason is because uh, there was some previous karmas that had to be dealt with in this way. And why did they have to be dealt with in that way? I mean, people have tried to explain it in so many ways. And uh, I don't know. In this situation, I think your guess is about as good as mine is. Um, Anuman is alive and immortal. If this is true and has special significance, how do we approach his grace in our life? Uh, the best way is simply to uh, request him to assist us always to be focused on the supreme reality, and he will assist us to focus on Rama. And that's the best thing we can do. How can we become dis disciplined or break the laziness cycle? Uh, the best way to do that is every time you realize you're being lazy, Again, return your attention to the thing that is assisting you not to become lazy. So if you're doing puja of Hanuman and you're becoming lazy, even if that, even just recite one mantra, even just recite Rama once, if that's all you can do and, and keep moving forward however long it takes. Don't think about time, just keep moving forward. Uh, did Hanuman give any mantra to the residents of the Himalaya? That's a really good question, uh, where he lifted Dronagiri. Uh, don't know. I would, if uh, I ever get to Dronagiri and find any residents who are, have a connection back to them, I'll certainly try to find out. Can you share the story of Hanuman and Machindranath? Uh, maybe at some point, but um, that's a long story. In fact, I'm currently trying to translate very, very slowly, no doubt, uh, the Navnat Bhakti Sada, in which there is an extended story between Hanuman and Machindranath. And at some point, uh, not today, maybe I will, in fact, share that story. Have I met Hanumanji? Well, that would be great. But if I had met Hanumanji, there's quite, there's every likelihood that I would be over there instead of over here. So did I, have I met somebody who personally has met Hanumanji? I, Vimalananda told me he did, and I definitely believe that uh, he did so. Is he more accessible than other deities in some way? Um, in, in the way that um, I believe that he is immortal in the sense that, I mean, uh, you know, immortal, he's a Siddha. He can create a body whenever he wants to. So he is, he is in a way tethered to this plane of existence, but he's not limited in the same way you and I are. So I think probably he's a bit more accessible in the same way that Ganapati is more accessible also because Ganapati is part human and and part elephant and therefore uh, connected, connected, more connected to humans than a lot of these other deities are. Can I comment on the height of Hanuman and the height of humans during those times? Vimalananda told me that Rama and Lakshman and so on were like 30 feet tall. And Hanuman, of course, could take whatever size he wanted to. So I'm going to assume that when he was around Rama, he was probably 30 feet tall. Um, if Hanumanji was so powerful, why couldn't he help Sugriva in defeating Vali? Well, there's a good question. I think possibly it has to do with the fact that Vali was so powerful that he could actually put, um, uh, I mean, he was actually, he was very, was it Vali or was it, uh, who put Ravana under his arm or was that Sasra Arjuna? Anyway, Vali was very powerful. And remember that happened before Hanuman remembered exactly how powerful he was. So um, I think probably it's something like that. I mean, he was powerful, but Wally at that time was more aware of how more powerful he was. That's my 
current, current opinion. What's the relationship between Rama and Ravana? Ooh, that's a long story, but it has to do with the fact that Vishnu had two doorkeepers, Jaya and Vijaya, and they couldn't recognize the four Sanat Kumaras, and they were about to curse him, and Vishnu came out and pacified them and said to Jay and Vijay, I have to curse you now. And they said, oh my God, don't do that. And they said, I've already done it, but you are going to be born as demons and I'm going to kill you. And then everything will be better. Basically the end. Uh, but I mean, that's a very short version of it. Uh, do you think the separation of Sita and Rama have something to do with our turning back to God again and again and again? Absolutely. Because Sita represents Kundalini Shakti. Rama represents the supreme reality. Sita is down at Lanka at the base of the spine. She has to return to Rama. So everything that happened externally is happening internally in the human body also. Uh, does Sita merge with Rama through pranayama? Um, pranayama, prana is certainly necessary to assist Sita to return to Rama, but um, uh, the kundalini has a number of layers. The prana is a little more uh, dense than the most uh, subtle version of the kundalini. So prana, the prana makes the uh, uh, facilitates the creation of the uh, conduit in which kundalini can remove uh, emerge. So so Hanuman assists Sita to do it, but Rama himself has to get to Sita to move up. Can you speak to the relationship of Rama and the Bijamanta Rama of the second chakra? By second, I suppose you mean the uh, <clears throat> uh, the the um, uh, Anahata chakra. Uh, um, well, Rama is definitely Rambija, the fire. Um, actually, no. What am I saying? It's the third chakra. Um, I think that's a little too complicated for right now. Has Rama died? Rama absolutely did die and went into the Sadayu River. He died after Lakshman had to give up his life because of a complicated bana. Um, but um, there is a story that, of, of course, Rama died in this Dwapara Yuga. And um, many people believe that uh, Rama appears every Dwapara Yuga. Some people believe that he doesn't appear every Dwapara Yuga, but he appears every Kalpa. But definitely there have been many, many Ramas and there have been many, many Ravanas. And um, the principle of Hanuman um, has always been there. And sometimes he's aware of who he is and sometimes he's not aware of who he is and he has to be reminded. But that principle, that prana is always there in the same way that prana uh, is the life force that has been keeping things alive on this earth for the past approximately 4.1 billion years. So since that's the end of all the questions, I'm going to say Jay Hanuman, Om Nam Shivaya, and uh, I wish everybody a very happy Hanuman Jayanti, and we'll uh, see you again another time. Om. Um.